playing hide and seek, and I'm the seeker. I'm looking for my friends. Can you help me? Now, where could they be? Hmm. I know, maybe in the shower. Aha! Oh, you found me. Well done, Sarona. I'm gonna go play Lego where you find everyone else, okay? Sounds good. Hmm. Now, where shall we look next? Hmm. I know, the library. That light is terribly bright, man. Good seeking. I didn't think you'd ever find me with all these big things. <laughs> now where can Petunia be? Hmm. I know, the fridge. I found you, Petunia. <gasps> oh, oh. <laughs> I was just Checking on the food. Yep, it's fine. Oh, what a great hiding place, Petunia. Hiding? Oh, yeah, hide and seek, yes. Hmm, well, since I'm here anyway, I think I'll just have a quick snack. You want something? No, thank you. I still have to find Quaffle and Camilla. Okay. Hmm. Now, where could they be? Hmm. Maybe in the toy box. Can you help me? Do you see anyone? There you are, Quaffle! Quaffle! I see you! You are right there behind the lion! What a good spot! Yes, it was a very clever place to hide. I only have Cabela left. Okay. Strange. Can you please help me? May I have one of your feathers? Certainly. Don't worry, Camilla. I'm sure this will work. Tickle, 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 tickle. See? Oh, 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 oh. No. I've got it! I've got it! Tickle, tickle, tickle! Tickle, 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 tickle! Oh, thank you, Carmela! Wow, Sir Romanoff, you really are brave! Ah, you're welcome. And now I've finished hide and go seek! I have found everybody! Oh, Mrs. Robin is going to tell the story. I'm going to go and help her. Oh, I think I'm going to go and take a nap. Somewhere else. <sighs> I made it. Yes, you made it. I was waiting for you. Oh, thank you. What were you doing upstairs with the lights off? Ah, we were playing hide and go seek in the dark. Hmm, was it fun? Yes, it was very fun, until the end when it got a bit strange. 
Uh, I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> okay. Well, are you ready to start? Yes! I am so ready! I'm excited to say hello to the children! Well, the camera's rolling. You can say hello. Oh! Oh! Hi, children! I'm happy to see you! Hi! Hello, everyone. I'm Mrs. Robin, your friendly neighborhood Sunday school teacher, and I have with me my good friend, Sir Romanoff the Brave. Sir Romanoff the Brave. And we're here to tell you a story. And today, God's Garden story is about someone who was lost and then found by God. He was lost? Well, he wasn't actually lost, but he was wrong about who God is, which is a lot like being in the dark and being lost. Oh, his name was Saul. Now, this is something that happened after Jesus had died and risen from death and gone up to heaven to be with God the Father. And the, he had sent the Holy Spirit down to baptize all of the followers of Jesus. And remember how they were going around and telling everyone the great news. The great news that Jesus was God and he had come to earth to rescue us. That's right. Jesus came to rescue us from our sins and from the consequences of sins, which is death. God loves us so much, and he wants us to live, and to live with him in joy. Forever. Yeah, forever. So that's why Jesus came. And this is what the people were going around telling everybody. But some people did not like what the new Christians were saying about Jesus. They thought it was a trick and a lie. That's right. And one of those people was named Saul. Saul was a young Pharisee. He had spent his whole life learning about God and doing his best to worship him and teach people about him. Saul believed that Jesus was a fake and that his followers were bad people. He wanted to catch them all and put them into prison and maybe even have them killed. Whoa. Saul hated the followers of Jesus. He sounds like a really mean person. Well, I don't know if he was mean, but I think he was completely, absolutely sure that he was right and the other people were wrong and he was going to make sure they got into big, big trouble. So what happened? Did Saul catch all the Christians like Peter and John and Andrew and Philip and, and Mary and Joanna? Did he catch Joanna and put them into jail? Well, Saul did his best to catch them. We can hear about what happened to Saul in the book of Acts in chapter 9. Would you like me to read it to you? Oh, yes. I'm very nervous. What is going to happen? Let me just get my Bible. Here we go. Acts 9. Meanwhile, Saul continued to oppose the Lord's followers. He said they would be put to death. He went to the high priest and asked the priest for letters to the synagogue in Damascus. He wanted to find men and women who belonged to the way of Jesus. The letters would allow him to take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. Oh no! He's going to catch the disciples and have them killed! This is terrible! Oh, oh I'm scared! It, it's all right, Sir Romanoff. This story has a good ending. Jesus is going to take care of Saul. Oh, he, he, he's not going to zap him, is he? Jesus? Zap him? Jesus didn't go around zapping people. Oh, right. Okay, okay. Please continue. So Saul set out to catch the Christians. On his journey, Saul approached the city of Damascus. Suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground, and he heard a voice speak to him. Saul! Saul! Why are you fighting me? Oh, oh, oh! I bet it's Jesus! Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, he replied. Ha! It was Jesus! Hooray! Jesus said, I am the one you are opposing. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there. They were unable to speak. They had heard the sound, but they didn't see anyone. Saul got up from the ground and opened his eyes but he couldn't see. What do you mean he couldn't see? He was blind. Everything was black, dark. He couldn't see anything. Oh. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind. Oh, 
I bet he felt really upset to find out that he'd been telling everyone that Jesus was a fake when Jesus was actually God's son. Yes, he felt so upset he didn't eat or drink anything. He just prayed and wept. Now in Damascus, there was a believer named Ananias, and the Lord called out to him in a vision. Ananias, he said. Yes, Lord, he answered. And the Lord told him, Go to the house on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying. In a vision, Saul has seen a man come and place his hands on him. That man's name is Ananias. In the vision, Ananias placed his hands on Saul so he could see again. So God is asking a Christian to go and help Saul? Yeah. After he'd been going around trying to get them all killed? Yeah. Hmm. I wouldn't help him. No way. Even if Jesus asked you to? Well, all right, then I guess I would. Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man. They say he's done awful things to your holy people in Jerusalem. And now he's come here to arrest all those who worship you. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, I have chosen this man to work for me. He will announce my name to the Gentiles. That means people who aren't Jewish. And to their kings. He will also announce my name to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for me. So Ananias went to the house and entered it. Ananias was very brave. He was. So he went to the house and entered it, and he placed his hands on Saul. Brother Saul, he said, you saw the Lord Jesus. He appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, and he has sent me so you will be able to see again. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right away, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. Oh, so... Jesus healed his blindness and sent the Holy Spirit to fill Saul? Yes, even though Saul had done many wrong things, saying he was doing God's work, God still had mercy on him. Not only that, but he invited Saul to help him to tell people about Jesus and to show Saul that he was being completely changed. God changed his name from Saul to Paul. Ah, I've heard of Paul. So Saul, also called Paul, got up and was baptized. After eating some food, he got his strength back. Paul spent several days with the believers in Damascus. Right away, he began to preach in the synagogues. He taught that Jesus is the Son of God. And all who heard him were amazed. Oh, they must have been totally, completely amazed. It's like if a really mean bullying kid at school suddenly came to school and started being really kind and helpful. Or it's like the president of a country suddenly changing their mind, crossing the floor, and joining the opposite political party. Oh, that would never happen. Or like a mean dog that always growls and tries to bite you, and then suddenly he becomes its sweet, playful puppy, like Quaffle. It would be hard for Christians to trust Paul. Yes, I think they were quite nervous at first, but the Holy Spirit reassured them. And since Paul started going around telling everyone that Jesus was God's son, it soon became clear he had completely changed his mind and his heart. Eventually, Paul traveled all around that part of the world telling everybody about Jesus. And through Paul, God wrote many letters explaining to people who Jesus was and how to be the church. We can still read these letters today in the New Testament. They're often named after the cities that they were written for. There's Romans and Corinthians, Galatians, Thessalonians, more like that. You mean, you mean Saul, this guy, Paul, who was attacking the Christians, eventually he helped write parts of the Bible? Yes. That's, that's incredible. With God, any kind of change is possible. He shines light into darkness and reveals the truth. And the truth is that Jesus is God's son. In John chapter 8, verse 32, it says, Jesus said, 
If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Ugh. So what can we do to remember this story? I have an idea. Can you sit on my knee for a minute? Uh, okay. Here's my idea. Get an adult to set up an obstacle course, a simple one, in the backyard or in your house. Then get a piece of cloth or fabric and... Ah! I can't see! I can't see! I can't see anything! Ah! Where are you? Where are you, children? Where are you? Um, they're at home. Oh yeah. <laughs> so once you are blindfolded, no peeking. Have an older brother, sister, or a parent lead you through the obstacle course, where are we going, by the hand, and have them guide you safely through all the obstacles. And then at the end, you can remove your blindfold, and you can see where you've been. That would be fun. Yeah, that would be lots of fun. Can we do this after? Yes. Okay. So before we go, let's pray. This is a repeat after me prayer. This is a repeat after Mrs. Robin prayer. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, thank you for saving Saul. Thank you for saving Saul and showing him the truth and showing him the truth. Please God, shine your light into our lives. Please God, shine your light into our lives and show us the truth of who you are and show us the truth of who you are and how much you love us and how much you love us. Amen. Amen. Well, goodbye, children. It was nice seeing you and not seeing you. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's God's Garden Story. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a great one. Bye. Well, where exactly are you sitting? I'm right here. Where? Oh, I'm right here. Where? Where are you? I'm right here. Is this your ear? No, that's my nose. Oh. Is this your eyebrow? Yes, that's my eyebrow. Oh, oh, is this your elbow? No, that's my chin. Oh, your chin. Oh, I see. No, you don't see. Ah, all right. Anyway, goodbye.